Well, welcome again to Orienteering Unlocked. We've got a new guest for us today. It's Stephen Hale. He's a legend of British orienteering. Of course, his career spanned all the way from 85 to 2001, an incredible eight world championships within that time. Of course, winning a silver medal in 1993, uh, only 15 seconds off the gold medal that year in the relay. Uh, of course, the same year, he was fourth, only one second from the bronze medals. So some incredible individual performances as well as relay performances. But we're going to be talking about 1999. That was when the World Championships was in Scotland. And of course, Steve, you were eighth in the short distance and 12th in the long distance that year. Well, yep. welcome, to, mm -hmm. welcome to the show. Thank you for spending the time to, uh, Thank yeah, you. to join yeah. me and have this little interview. We're going to talk a little bit about 99 and your preparations. And we're also just going to talk in general about you and orienteering. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, can we start off? How did you get into orienteering? Like what, what was the vibe way back in... Uh, oh the 70s or, or was it even earlier? Yeah, well, it, no, it was the uh, early 70s. It's actually, the man who's just behind your left left ear, Peter Palmer, was a big influence. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 not, not, not Martin, Peter. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the wrong shoulder. It's, uh, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, was, he went to university with my dad. They were runners. And, uh, uh, and we lived in Nottingham and they lived in Walton, uh, in, in Staffordshire. And... Uh, and they'd, they'd finished their running careers, and, and Peter Palmer got us as a family into orienteering. And we spent our that was 72, I think, was 70, early 70s. Um, 72 was the first year I went out uh, all by myself into the forest. Right. I think I've got my uh, original map somewhere. It looks like it's drawn, drawn the cranes. White Springs, <laughs> White Springs in, in, in Derbyshire, I think. <laughs> I think, yeah. Yeah. I mean, White White Springs is it? Is it a terrain that's used much today? Do you know? It's a little map. It's about that big, and it, the map looks like it's drawn with crayons. But uh, <laughs> I, I remember it clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And obviously, from there, you developed into well, yeah, one of one of Britain's best ever orienteers. So, what was it that that allowed you to take that step up from that first event in White Springs all the way through the the squad systems and such into the international stage? Yeah, well, even there, was, I think uh, Peter Palmer was a pioneer uh, organising junior activities. I think most of the activities up to then were, were for veterans. It was a, a sport run by veterans for veterans. And I think Peter Palmer was, uh, started getting kids involved and I, I benefited from that um, uh, along with a lot of the other youngsters and Walton Chasers. We, we joined Walton Chasers and we spent a lot of happy days training over in uh, on Cannock Chase. Um, and it went on from there. Um, I went to university in Sheffield, which is a great, uh, a great uh, environment for, for orienteering with, the, with, with Shuok and, the, and great possibilities for training around Sheffield and, uh, and just a great club at the time, real club. Um, real, real good, good atmosphere in the club. Yeah, um, no, that's that's yeah, good. So I that's, mean, what would you say then about the, the the way that the system was set up back then? Was it was it easy to find other groups to train with? You know, were you mostly doing your own training with a bit of you know coaching from Peter, or was it training in groups, regional squads, and uh, yeah, meeting up a yeah, lot? Yeah, a few groups. a few regional squads, but main but mainly training by myself. Actually, we um, we moved we, we then made the a move up to the, the northeast of England, uh, pro probably one of the areas of, of Britain with the least amount of forest. So I um, County Durham. Uh, Hampstead was about 40 kilometres away. Hampstead Forest was 40 kilometres away, and, and uh, not much else within uh, uh, within spitting distance. So, so I did a quite a lot of my training with the Athletics Club. Actually, physical training. I was a, a strong runner, which which is actually a, a bonus and in, in, was a bit real benefit in, uh, uh, in competing in in, uh, in, in in later years. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then actually, uh, and then actually after university, I, I, I got a uh, I, I looked around for work where I could combine work with orienteering and ended up in, in Perth, in Scotland, hmm. um, which was, there wasn't a club in Perth, there was um, Fourth Valley orienteers, uh, but uh, so I, I was once again training with athletes, with runners, distance runners on the on the evenings, but but great train, terrain, orienteering terrain that I could get out into and train. 
Yeah, absolutely. On, on nearby the and such. So exactly. Yeah. Was yeah. it when was it then that you first started to you know sort of realize your potential and have designs on world championships and being being the very best you could be and being an elite athlete? The first uh, world champs I, I felt had a chance of making was '83 um, in Hungary um, and got quite close. Uh, like most people, I, I, I felt I was uh, I was hard done by, but, but not being selected. But uh, there you go. <laughs> um, but it, what it what it did make me uh, be was determined to make sure that the selectors two years later the selectors wouldn't have any doubts. I wouldn't. I, well, I wanted to make sure in two years time. I'm not going to give them the choice. They're going to have to select me. Um, so uh, they um, and 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 it turned out I did make it to Australia. And then I, I, I ran disastrously in Australia, either uh, as well. But um, but nevertheless, that, that also that also gave me a bit of a, an incentive to make sure that uh, okay, two years time, I'll I'll try and um, and, and make sure I run a bit better. Yeah, I mean, um, you, you don't have to uh, succeed on your first attempt at World Champs, for sure. Uh, some people, some very special people have done, of course, but uh, yeah. no, I for one as well. I, yeah, completely, uh, that first World Championships, I think many will many will uh, agree with you there that it's it's not easy. Um, yeah. It so wasn't that, just, I mean, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, it wasn't just the first World Championships, it was the first control of the first World Championships. <laughs> Uh, I wasted, I think I wasted nine minutes swatting around and saw people just <laughs> steaming past me. And then I got, got, it to, got it together a bit, but it was just a, a washout from the start. But anyway, yeah, go on. Well, that's, I mean, that's a great story. I love that. Uh, <laughs> I was just, I was just going to bring us forward in, in time then. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously a lot happens in between uh, 85 and 99. Uh, mm -hmm. But give us a little bit of a flavour just in those intervening years, you know, what you're doing. Are you, are you, were you still in Scotland uh, or did you, yeah. did you feel, yeah, so the whole time you were, you were training in Scotland. So when the, home, champ, when the home championships were announced, you, you were pretty excited for that, I guess. Yeah, well, up to, no, well, no, not quite. I, 85, I, 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 I graduated and went, uh, went to work in Perth. And then for four years, four, four, nearly five years, I was working in Perth. Um, so up to, up to 90. And then I moved to Sweden in uh, uh, 1990 and spent, uh, basically spent the rest of my time, That's more right. or less, in Sweden. Uh, so up to, so from, from 90 to 99 was, was, was spent predominantly in Sweden. Yeah. Um, but I think the I think the breakthrough uh, World Championships wise was eighty nine in in Sweden. Uh, I, I came fifteenth, which was, it was suddenly a good solid performance, uh, and that sort of bedded the way to to for me to to get get come to Sweden. I, I, it was I was able to hold my own in Sweden, and then the and and, and the club in Karlstad were interested in in in, in supporting me and. And had relative success quite quickly once I came to Sweden, which was a big boost as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I uh, mean, for those of you, for those people watching who know the strength and depth of the Swedish uh, leagues and the Swedish sort of national races, um, yeah, they'll understand entirely how good you were when you know you you were right at the top of the Swedish championships, right? Yeah, ninety-seven. I won the Swedish champs. Both the in the middle middle distance and the long distance. Uh, so so that was a that was a, a good year for me. Absolutely incredible. That I mean, to me that it, that is right up there. Uh, puts you puts you right up there because yeah, I I myself have experience of the the Swedish system and I know how many good runners uh, there are and how how much of a perfect race you you really have to have to mm. to stand there on the top. Uh, it doesn't come for free and mm. yeah got to be incredibly talented for that so all right so, yeah so i mean essentially then we can say the whole of the 90s you were in sweden yeah preparing yourself being being as good as you can be at orienteering in a fantastic obviously fantastic location for developing your orienteering do you put 
than your success in 99 um, and the races up until that point down to the way you were training in Sweden? Can you just describe a little bit about, you know, the, the training setup that you had and the, the sort of flow that you found in your training and preparation for world champs in, in this period? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, the, the, one of them, the big differences in Sweden was having the, the, the training the training partners and the training, the, the, the top training uh, day in, day out, being able to train with really top class people who, 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 could, who can push you. And then, of course, the access to, to both the good terrain for, for training and top class races, week in, week out, um, racing against people who are amongst the best in the world. Um, I lived in, in Karlstad at the time, lived there for, for something like 15 years. Um, and the car set's quite close to Norway, so I took advantage of that uh, and went over to Norway and raced race against the Norwegians quite often, which was a, a good a, a, a good leveler. <laughs> Norwegians in Norwegians Norwegian train terrain was uh, was quite a challenge. Um, so they, yeah, basically uh, competed and raced, trained with uh, with with the club. Um, did a lot of training by myself as well, of course, and. Um, and uh, perhaps above all, as, as I said, it's a, it's a regular racing at, at top class, which is the real, mm. is the real, um, yeah, no, absolutely, the, the real thing that lifts you. Definitely, definitely. Do you do you have any memories then of '99 and your preparation leading into '99? How you were feeling, the sort of terrain and the and the mm. and the geeking and, and the maps and such that you were trying to you know prepare yourself for. Mm. Well. I lived in Scotland for four years, nearly five years, uh, so I knew uh, I knew what to expect. Um, and then actually, we we had our our second kid, Oliver, um, in in November '98. So I had a bit of parental leave. Uh, we, so so what 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 we actually did was I, I took some parental leave over the over the summer, and we came over to Scotland for I can't remember it was six weeks before the world champs and and uh, just took the advantage of coming back to scotland and spending some time training and 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 and, and running in scotland up to the world champs uh, whether that was a, a benefit or not i don't know uh, in hindsight it, it might not have been but it was a great time had a great time and uh, and and spent some time with the family in scotland mm. no i mean that sounds fantastic i mean there's in a way, you know, Sweden has a lot of races, but they tend to go a bit quiet in the summertime. So yeah, you know, yeah. it probably was a good thing that you were out in uh, out in Scotland, getting getting into yeah. the terrain. And so when you when you arrived then at the World Champs, how how was it? I mean, an old hand at that point, uh, you'd you'd yeah. competed in many World Championships. Did you mm -hmm. have anything to to? I mean, how was the team, for instance? Were you one of the older ones, the more experienced ones. I would probably was. I probably was uh, the the oldest in the team. I was what was I thirty five? Thirty five. I was a, a veteran by that stage, mm. so uh, getting a bit long in the tooth. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah, and then the, of course the short race and the classic distance uh, that mm. both went pretty good for you. And of course you I, were I was, in well, the relay as well. As the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually bitterly disappointed. Um, I was hoping for better, mm -hmm. uh, considerably better. Uh, the, the, the long distance was a, a real disappointment. I felt just washed out after that. I, I went all in for it and and just wasn't quite on on the ball. It is it's just I didn't really make any mistakes. But looking at the as as far as I can remember, just looking at the splits, I was just off the off the pace. Just a few seconds on each leg and they all add up and then um, maybe not the best route choice on this big long long route choice across the map where I maybe lost a couple of minutes maybe against the fastest fastest time it's, it's, it's all going from memory which is might not be perfect uh, but but that was my my I, I just felt bitterly disappointed with the with the my result at the at the long distance um, I'd been hoping for for better I saw it was really my last chance uh, I felt and uh, I didn't take it um, yeah yeah i mean it's all, that's that's always pretty rough i guess but um what about the short then the short was a kind of special special type of yep. train of course along in glen Affric, 
that's a very Glenn tough, Affleck. sort of well-known yeah. sort of style of terrain. But yeah, but Glen Affleck was that was the first time I'd run actually in Glen Affleck. I don't think there'd been any other uh, events there previously. I think so. That was new terrain. Though it wasn't, it wasn't novel terrain. It wasn't anything anything unexpected. But it was new terrain. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the short distance was was fairly familiar, even if I hadn't been there for for 10, 10 years or so, it wasn't uh, a new what to expect. And you could, you, there were old maps and, mm -hmm. and so there, there wasn't, wasn't really any surprises at all there. And I, I thought I had a good chance. Um, I thought I had a really good chance. Um, but uh, again, I was disapp disappointed with eighth. I, I think I came in, when I came in, I was leading when I came in and there weren't that many, but they all came in in front of me at the end. I just uh, again, I felt as I finished, it wasn't good enough. I, I sort of felt I was hoping, I was hoping, but uh, no. uh, it, it just wasn't that little extra. Just that little extra was missing, and I, I, and I think I think I was probably a little bit defensive as well. There was one leg where there was you either went went for it straight through a, a bit of green and, and popped out the controller. You took a light, slightly round round route, took the path and the safe way, and I, I took the safe way. Mm. And I maybe lost 15, 20 seconds on that leg, and, and it, uh, just just uh, too much. Yeah, I mean the margins are always mm. tight, always yeah. tight. And yeah. Would you say like the way in in the way you ran, say for your fourth uh, and just one second off the medals? Yeah. Um, in 93 mm, mm. Uh, and the way you were running there in the relay of course as well and such did you change anything or you know was it was it like a change in mental attitude that that just made you back off or, or just this home championship feeling do you think that 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 put you off that day or that week uh, it's difficult to analyze i think physically i wasn't quite there which maybe um meant that I, I i maybe wasn't quite as offensive as uh, i didn't quite run as offensively as i, <clears throat> I should have done I, I think mentally i, I realized sort of deep down i realized physically i'm not quite there um I've, and, and looking back uh, uh, it, it's i had a big dip 95 and i had a big uh 99 worked hard but didn't quite get there and, and both coincide coincided with the years when we we had uh, had kids uh, not, do you, and 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 you think you're doing well. You think you're doing it, but it does does take it out of you more than you more than you think. So so that's uh, maybe one 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 reason why 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 physically. I mean, I was I was in good reasonable form, but but just miss missing that that little extra that I, that I had ninety three. Mm. Uh, so so um, ninety three ninety seven. I didn't run too well at World Champs ninety seven, but ninety seven was when I won the world, the won the Swedish Champs. So they, right. so but and, and 95, 98, yeah, 99, yeah. kids, kids. <laughs> well, let's so, let's talk so, a little bit about that then. Let's go on to just yeah. a little bit about what you've been up to since uh, mm -hmm. your orienteering career and how it's all looking. You've been you've been doing a bit of uh, a bit of everything, haven't you? A bit of mountain bike orienteering, yeah, yeah. orienteering even. Uh, uh, I tried not to, but I sort of ended up. Um, <laughs> that, that's an interesting story. I can say, <laughs> ski orienteering. <laughs> I've probably done. A, I think I've done. Oh, hold on. I think I've done three uh, three ski orienteering races in my life. Three, four. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> well, we can maybe get onto that. But and and <laughs> then you've been living in Sweden, obviously, uh, mm. family things and such. Mm. What, what is it uh, about Sweden that you? you know, you've really loved and, you know, this is you now, you're a Swede, right? Yeah, yeah, well, basically, yeah. I've lived here more longer than I've lived in Britain uh, by a good margin these days. Um, just the, the, certainly well, the ability to com combine working life with with uh, uh, free, t free time, uh, with private life, uh, Possibility to, to work and orienteer and, and orienteer at a, a high level. I got I was able to take uh, work part time, no questions asked. It was just seen nat natural for an employee. Something I I tried to to sort out in Scotland with my my employer in Scotland, but they just um, they couldn't understand. They kept offering. They offered me me more money. I said no, no, no. I want to work less time. <laughs> Do you want the pay rise? No, 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 no. <laughs> but but uh, but uh, it, uh, and. 
uh, and it's just um, just a uh, it just suits me the lifestyle here. Yeah, mm. get, can get out of the forest. I can get on my mountain bike these days and and pedal pedal out the door, and and we've got just fantastic um, trails all around. Hundreds of kilometres of of great trails. Oh, mountain fantastic. biking these days. It's mountain biking. Previously, yeah. it was it was orienteering. Yeah. Uh, Not fantastic. Well. Thanks very much for all of the discussion here. I've just got yep. before we before we go and before we round okay. up, of course, I've got a little quiz. Uh, it's kind of just a bit of fun. You, I've got five um, five images to share with you. Okay. Just in a little PowerPoint presentation here. I hope you're going to be kind to me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hmm? Now start easy. Um, so you just just tell me. Uh, whoa. Blimey. Oh, right. tell, me, tell, me, tell me a little bit the the first image here um tell that's me the year, the, tell me the year and tell me what's going on tell me well, that's nine that's 93 that's the relays 93 in the in the states and that's uh the the, the prize prize giving ceremony silver medal for the for for the british team Stephen that's palmer right. Mod, magnus uh John Musgrave and the and okay. some some other guy on the on the right hand side there, Looking and uh, Peter Powell in the middle. But so sort of um, he he was the man behind the uh, that generation of orienteers in 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 Britain basically. Yeah, yeah no, fantastic guy and uh, fantastic headwear as well. So yeah, <laughs> good. All right, this one. Ah, oh, that must be. The, uh, there's, a, there's a clue on on Jamie's number there. Actually, it says Mickley, yeah. um, and that's the the Nordic Open Nordic Championships where Jamie had a stormer on the last leg and and brought us home in fourth first place. Yeah, uh, big surprise. Yeah, that was that must have been that must have been two thousand actually. Mm. Yeah, and with uh, Joran as well there. Joran Anderson, yeah, who was the yeah. who was the, the national coach, team coach. Fantastic. And some mm. incredible retro kits. Uh, of course, many people probably recognize that from the early 2000s. Uh, yeah. As well. All right, this one then. Here we are. Yeah, there we, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> My sole appearance at the, uh, actually the World Championships uh, Ski Orienteering. Um, I was actually there as a father. For the, the girl in the, in the funny white bobbly hat is my daughter. And she's a, she was a cross-country skier. And I said, hey, she's got a British passport as well. So I said, hey, Sarah, you fancy you doing the World, world uh, Ski Orienting Championships? It's in Sweden. And she said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And I deliberately left my skis at home so I wouldn't end up skiing these, these monstrous trails down on the hillside through, through, um, through Birch, fell Birch on scooter trails. So I deliberately left my skis behind. Uh, and then they, they they were all knackered, or half the team were knackered by the end of the, by the time the relay came around. They'd had a, a monstrous long distance race, um, and they didn't have a full team. So in the end, I had to borrow a pair of skis, and they said, "Okay, I'll, okay, okay." So I actually did make an appearance on the on in the relay. Well, there you go, fantastic. Yeah. And you you know just wearing a t shirt, just going around. <laughs> 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 Yeah, good, so it was good. It was a great time. Great time. Good to meet the meet the the guys and the girls there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here's a retro one. Oh gosh, that must be Scotland. That must be '99 and the opening ceremony opening in in Venice. The mm. whole team wearing uh, most of them wearing sunglasses or some trying to look cool at least. Yeah, it probably it looks like it, 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 you're, it, at the, you're at the back looking. It looks like it's sunny. I was, Trying to keep the low profile there, yeah. I was, uh, I admit, uh, we were the veterans. Yvette and myself were, were keeping a low profile. Yeah, uh, uh, hanging around. Oh, that there, yeah. yeah. Good. All right, well done. And okay. finally. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it sort, sort of sums up my uh, mountain bike orienteering career. Um, I think that might have been a, a district championship, so one of the lo a local race anyway. Uh, um, I sort of screwed up the punching at the, at the finish there. Mm. Putting um, in a lot of effort, at least. 
Uh, I'm not sure if it was a lot of effort or lack of lack of skill. <laughs> have you improved since? I have improved since, yeah. I have improved. I've upgraded my kit as well. It's no longer a, a pink um, bum bag I cycle really? with as well. And I've got a, a full sus bike these days as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to compensate for the lack of skill with uh, by splashing out on equipment. With good, with good gear, yeah. All the yeah. gear. Good. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, okay. That we're just, I... uh, yeah, we'll just finish up. I mean, that was that was fantastic. I love that. Loved everything about uh, about this interview with you, um, Steve. Thanks yeah, I well, enjoyed it. Thanks enjoyed for all it. the help and all the best for the future. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully people can can see you around or at least see your family doing great stuff in the orienteering world and the orienteering community. Um, okay. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah. thank you very much for taking the time and giving us. Okay, thanks. Good to good to speak to you, Hector. Good stories good to speak tonight. to you. Yeah. No, <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you very okay. much. Take care of yourself. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Good night. Bye. Bye.